All right, so just a quick review from last class. We had talked about cell division and we had talked about mitosis, um, specifically mitosis. This is occurring in the body cells, which are called the somatic cells. This is not happening in the gametes. So mitosis is for normal cell replacement, um, repairing um, the cells and for growth and so on, um, not occurring in the gametes. Um, so here the cell divides, or sorry, the DNA first has to replicate, and then the cell will divide and you have the two um, daughter cells, which are identical to the parent cell. All right, so each new cell um, ends up with a complete set of chromosomes and they're identical to each other and to the original cell. Okay, and then today we are going to talk about meiosis. All right, so we're going to look at um, sex cells, which are our gametes, and we're going to talk about genetic variation. Um, so recall that humans have a total of 46 chromosomes. So the in humans, the sperm and the egg cells will only have 23 chromosomes. So when fertilization occurs, um, you're getting 23 chromosomes from the sperm, and you're getting 23 chromosomes from the eggs for a total of 46 chromosomes. All right, so when an egg and sperm join, um, to form that zygote, that new cell now will have a complete set of chromosomes, which is 46 in humans. So what's happening in meiosis is this is the process of forming those gametes. Um, so this is a type of cell division. It's going to produce cells with only half the DNA of a normal cell. So half of 46 is 23. Um, so because each gamete has only half the DNA of a normal cell, um, so when the male and female gametes unite, then the zygote will have um, a complete set of DNA. So when we look at meiosis, there's going to be two cell divisions occurring. Okay, so when we look at meiosis, it's going to begin the same way as we saw mitosis. So it's going to start with replicating the chromosomes. But the major difference between mitosis and meiosis is that to form gametes, the cell division has to occur twice. And when we look at the diagram, then you'll see the final result is that the gametes will have only half the original number of chromosomes. All right. Um, we, what else we'll see in my, meiosis is that the chromosomes from the two parents, um, they combine, which increases that genetic variation within the species. So it, these um, will not be the identical copy as what we saw in mitosis. All right, so here um, we have a diagram here showing meiosis. So we have the original cell here, and then we have the replication occurring here. And now what you see happening here is we, we see a mix here now of some orange and purple, um, a lot of purple here and some orange here. That's called crossing over, and this is what produces those variations. So crossing over occurs, and it produces variations so that when we have our final result um, of cell division, um, you have these daughter cells now that do not look the same as the original cell. All right. The other thing we're seeing here is that there's four. Um, it produces four um, cells, um, so four gametes, and they're going to have half the number of chromosomes as the parent. All right, so cell division um, did occur twice. So it occurred here, that's meiosis one, and then it occurred again um, in meiosis two. Have you ever wondered how two siblings can have the same mom and dad and still look so different? Well, today we're going to talk about a process that makes that possible, a process called meiosis. Not to be confused with mitosis, which sounds unfortunately similar. Mitosis makes identical body cells, like your skin cells and stomach cells. Recall from our mitosis clip that since it makes identical body cells, mitosis is important for growth and for repair of damage or to replace worn out cells. But not meiosis. 
Meiosis is a process that contributes to genetic variety. Meiosis also doesn't make body cells; it makes sperm and egg cells, otherwise known as gametes. The fancier word. You might recall that humans have 46 chromosomes. That's how many chromosomes most body cells in your body have. But there are some human cells that don't have 46 chromosomes. Human sperm cells and egg cells have 23 chromosomes. Why the number difference? Well, if a sperm cell has 23 chromosomes and an egg cell has 23 chromosomes, when they come together, that makes 46 chromosomes. That will allow a newly formed fertilized egg to develop into a human. Meiosis is what we call a reduction division because you have a starting cell that has 46 chromosomes, and your ending cell, the sperm and egg cells, have only 23 chromosomes. Before we can start getting into the stages of meiosis to make gametes, we have to remember what happens before meiosis can even start. Actually, this also happens before mitosis. It's the stage known as interphase. And if you remember interphase, it's when the cell is growing, it's replicating its DNA, it's carrying out cell processes. And just like mitosis, interphase happens before meiosis is even going to start. So the starting cell has 46 chromosomes, and you have to duplicate those chromosomes in interphase before meiosis starts. That basically means you are duplicating your DNA, since chromosomes are made of DNA and protein. Ready for the tricky part? Well, because we tend to count chromosomes by the number of centromeres present, when the 46 chromosomes duplicate, we still say there are 46 chromosomes because the sister chromatids are still attached, and we are actually counting by centromeres. So 46 chromosomes here. They replicate in interphase, and you still have 46 chromosomes in this picture. But you went from 46 to 92 chromatids. A little tricky there. We have a detailed video that explains these chromosome numbers before and after replicating in interphase that can be useful for meiosis. Okay, so interphase checklist done. Now we can move into meiosis. You might remember the mitosis stages PMAT. The P was for prophase, the M was for metaphase, the A for anaphase, and the T for telophase. And the good news is that in meiosis, you still use those terms. But because meiosis is actually a reduction division, you're going from 46 chromosomes to 23. Which means you actually divide twice. So instead of mitosis, where you divide one time and do PMAT one time, in meiosis you're going to divide twice and therefore do PMAT twice. And because of this, in meiosis you put numbers after the phases to indicate whether you're in the first division or the second division. So let's dive right in. So let's start with the very first step, prophase one. One thing I like to remember about prophase is pro. This actually means before, and it kind of helps you remember that it comes before all the other stages start. This is where the chromosomes are going to condense and thicken. They are actually going to line up with their homologous pairs. The word homologous means that the chromosomes are approximately the same size and they contain the same types of genes in the same locations. They're going to match up. It is during this prophase one that this amazing process occurs, called crossing over. Now I know crossing over probably sounds like something very different, but this is actually really awesome process because this is when the chromosomes they're lined up in homologous pairs, and they have this way that they can transfer their genetic information and exchange it between each other. It's kind of like these chromosomes flop over each other and they do a little genetic information exchange here. It makes for what we call recombinant chromosomes, which can eventually contribute to the variety that we were mentioning that siblings can have, even when they have the same parents. More about that later. Now we move into metaphase one. In metaphase one, think of the M as standing for middle. The chromosomes are now going to be in the middle of the cell. It's a little bit different though from mitosis because these chromosomes are going to be in pairs in the middle of the cell. So it's not a single file line; they're in pairs in the middle. Now during anaphase one, think of A for away because the chromosomes are going to be pulled away by the spindle fibers. Then we end with telophase one, where you have two newly formed nuclei, and it becomes obvious that you're going to end meiosis one with two new cells. Cytokinesis follows with splitting the cytoplasm, but we're not done yet. On to meiosis two. The very first step in meiosis two is prophase two. 
It's not going to be nearly as eventful as it was in prophase 1, though, because they're not going to have homologous pairs of chromosomes. They also are not going to have this amazing process called crossing over that doesn't happen again in prophase 2. You have your chromosomes, and the spindles are starting to form like they did in prophase 1, but prophase 2 is just not as eventful of having that process of crossing over. In metaphase 2, remember, think M for middle, the chromosomes are going to line up in the middle. This time, though, they are in a single file line. They are not in pairs like they were in metaphase 1. Anaphase 2, remember, A for away, but this time it's the chromatids that are going to be pulled away by the spindle fibers. In telophase 2, you can see the nuclei reforming, and you can also see that the two cells have divided. There's going to be four cells forming. Cytokinesis will follow to completely split the cytoplasm. Now, keep in mind that meiosis in males produces sperm cells, and in females it produces egg cells. Because of independent assortment and also crossing over, you're going to have variety. For example, in a male, the four sperm cells that are produced each time, they are all different from each other. They're also different from the starting cell, because the starting cell had 46 chromosomes, and the ending cells only had 23. So they are not identical to the original, and they are not identical to each other. This is going to lead to variety, a reason why two siblings with the same parents can look different from each other. They still developed from a unique egg and a unique sperm cell that came together. One last thing to think about. Scientists are often looking into the process of meiosis, because sometimes the chromosomes don't separate correctly. It's called non-disjunction, when a cell can receive too many or too few chromosomes in the separation. This contributes to some genetic disorders, which is something scientists continue to study. Well, that's it for the Amoeba Sisters, and we remind you to stay curious. So next here, um, we're looking at the sex chromosomes. So on the right side, we can see um, a female um, has two X chromosomes. A male will have an X and a Y chromosome. All right, so the X chromosome, it is larger, um, and then the Y chromosome, it is smaller. So females um, have two X chromosomes, males have one X chromosome and one Y chromosome. And then when females um, form eggs, each egg will get one of the X chromosomes. When males form sperm, half of the sperm will get X chromosomes and the other half will get the Y chromosomes. So therefore, the sex of the offspring depends on which sperm uh, fertilizes the egg. All right, so... Um, um, the offspring being a male or a female depends on which uh, sperm is fertilizing the egg. All right, so this, uh, this worksheet is under modules. Um, so if you do need to go back to refer to it, it is under modules. So firstly here, we'll just review mitosis. So we, here we have a chromosome and then it duplicates. Um, and then we're, they're called sister chromos chromatids. We're just going to call it a chromosome. All right, so each chromosome first gets copied or duplicated, um, and it looks like this, like this X shape. Um, once all the chromosomes have duplicated, the cell will have two sets of chromosome, and they look like this, okay, which are the chromosomes that contain um, all the DNA. Um, and then we have the cell division occurring next. Um, there's one cell division. Um, it'll create two cells I'll call the daughter cells. And each of them will have the 46 chromosomes. And they are identical to the original, um, the original cell. Now, remember, there's 46, right? They're only showing two just for the sake of um, drawing the diagram. Um, but remember that there are 46 chromosomes in humans. All right, and then here we were looking at meiosis. Um, so we have the 23 pairs of chromosomes, which is 46. Um, they will duplicate. Then each um, pinched chromosome, it will split along with the rest of the cell. Um, each of the new set has uh, 23 pairs of chromosomes. It'll split again, 
Okay, so meiosis has two cell divisions, and then we have our um, gametes or our sex cells, and then each gamete has only the 23 chromosomes. All right, and then we have the four, um, four cells, the four or gamete cells. In biology, there are often vocabulary terms that sound pretty similar. Chromosome, chromatid, chromatin, transcription, translation, mitosis, meiosis. You probably have encountered this. When I was first learning about mitosis and meiosis, I learned them both separately first. And then I tried to figure out what was the same about them, what was different, why did they both matter. I would try to compare the stages by flipping through images. You know what would have really helped me? A side-by-side -side comparison. And that's what this video is. We assume you already have a background of mitosis and meiosis. If not, take a look at our videos on them. But this video is a side-by-side -side comparison, presented in a split screen. Mitosis on the left, meiosis on the right. Both of these processes, along with the cytokinesis that follows them to split the cytoplasm, are involved in making new cells. Mitosis results in body cells. Meiosis results in sperm and egg cells, otherwise known as the fancy term, gametes. Before we start mitosis and meiosis, let's look at what you start with. Your starting cell in both mitosis and meiosis is diploid, written here as 2N. That means it has two sets of chromosomes. In humans, that's including one set of 23 chromosomes from mom and one set of 23 chromosomes from dad, 46 chromosomes total. During interphase, the cell duplicates the chromosomes. When you duplicate 46 chromosomes, you still say there are 46 chromosomes as the newly duplicated portion is still attached at the centromere region. But there are actually 92 chromatids. Interphase isn't part of mitosis or meiosis, but it's a really important phase because it duplicates chromosomes before we get started. Just to point out, it's really hard to draw 46 chromosomes. We're going to use six chromosomes in our diagrams when we illustrate what's happening, because it's much easier to draw and visualize. Oh, and just a fun fact, some insects have six chromosomes, like mosquitoes. Unfortunately, I'm not a fan of mosquitoes, but mosquitoes do both mitosis and meiosis. When learning the stages, we give the acronym PMAT, which is helpful for understanding the stages. Both mitosis and meiosis go through these stages, but meiosis goes through them twice and therefore has a number next to each PMAT stage. We're going to show some basic events for each PMAT stage, but please know that there is way more detail to explore than what we can include in this quick video. Prophase in mitosis. Remember that pro can mean before, and this stage comes before the others. The chromosomes are visible. We say they're condensing, which means they are thickening. Prophase 1 in meiosis. Happening here too, but the chromosomes are actually going to match up with their homologous pairs. The word homologous means that the chromosomes are approximately the same size and they contain the same types of genes in the same locations. With each pair, one came from mom and one came from dad. In this formation, chromosomes can transfer their genetic information and exchange it between each other. It's called crossing over. It can make for what we call recombinant chromosomes. Metaphase in mitosis. The nuclear envelope which had surrounded the nucleus was already disassembled before metaphase even started. For metaphase, I like to remember the M for middle because in this stage, the chromosomes line up in the middle of the cell in a single file line. Metaphase 1 in meiosis. The chromosomes are in the middle as well, but they're still going to be in pairs in the middle of the cell, so it's not a single file line. Anaphase in mitosis. I like to think as the A for away, the chromatids are pulled away by the work of the spindles. They are moving to opposite sides of the cell. Anaphase 1 in meiosis. Same thing, but in this case, it's the chromosomes, not chromatids, being pulled away to opposite sides of the cell. Telophase in mitosis and telophase 1 in meiosis. The chromosomes are actually the complete opposite ends and new nuclei are forming on each side to make two new cells. And they are starting to surround the chromosomes on both sides as this will eventually form two cells. Cytokinesis follows to split the cytoplasm to complete the actual dividing of the cell. So at the end of mitosis and cytokinesis, we end with two identical diploid cells. In humans, they would both have 46 chromosomes.
This is great for organism growth. Growing requires making more cells, after all, or replacing damaged cells. On to meiosis 2. Prophase 2. Chromosomes are condensing in both cells. It's not going to be as eventful as it was in prophase 1 because they're not going to have homologous pairs and crossing over. Metaphase 2. M for middle, but this time the chromosomes are in a single file line, similar to how metaphase looked in mitosis. Anaphase 2. Think A for away. This time, though, it's actually the chromatids that are getting pulled away. Telophase 2. Chromosomes are at the complete opposite ends, and new nuclei are forming on each side to make these new cells. Cytokinesis will follow meiosis 2 to completely split the cytoplasm. We are now finished with meiosis, and we end with four non-identical cells, gametes. Males make sperm cells in meiosis, and females make egg cells in meiosis. These gametes are haploid, meaning they have half the number of chromosomes as the original starting cell. In the case of humans, the resulting cells would each have 23 chromosomes. By the way, when a sperm and egg cell combine, it results into a diploid cell, a fertilized egg, otherwise known as a zygote, which will then start a series of divisions using mitosis to give rise to a brand new organism. Well, that's it for the Muba Sisters, and we remind you to stay curious.